cabinet should be equity in the world. <laughs> Now then, crew, and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, my friends up in Auckland at ISL Industrial sent me some boxes down and some parcels the other day, and a few of you have watched the video of me doing the unboxing and seeing what they sent. And in that consignment was a Drill Doctor. Now, this is the, what is it, what model is it? There they are, 750X, which is supposed to be a professional one. Now, when I was at school doing my O-level metalwork, uh, my teacher Baz, who's passed away, so big, big loss to the world. He was a very clever chap. He taught me how to sharpen drill bits. Yeah, look, here's a big one. How to sharpen drill bits by hand. Jeez, that's in bad state. Uh, by hand on a bench grinder. You know, go up to the wheel, off you go, and then you dip it in the water. Make sure you can get too hot, and off you go again. And over the years, I've tried to pass on that knowledge to. You know, all my students when I was at Unitech, I, I did teach a little bit of metal work with them now and again when I was doing the, the CAME course, and trying to teach people how to sharpen drill bits. And it does seem to be a dying art, it, to, to the point where, oh, dead fly, uh, to the point where some people, when a drill bit goes blunt, they chuck it out and go and buy another one. Honestly, what a waste. I can't get my head around that. And, and because of that scenario, they tend to buy the real cheap, I suppose they call them disposable drill bits, but cheap drill bits are not particularly good, aren't they, usually? I mean, Project Farm's done plenty of videos on, on quality of drill bits. And I'm looking around now to see if I've still got a box. I have. There yeah, look, I was lucky, I kept one. I've been using this brand of drill bit for a while, and I get these um, from a place in Auckland. Not too industrial. Machine shop? I don't know, I can't remember the name of them now. I've forgotten. But uh, memories disappearing quickly. But these actually are really, really good. And if you try and find one, that's one of their drill bits. This is a 12mm. I've been doing lots and lots and lots of big hole drilling um, over the last sort of 12 months. I mean, I've been making sort of plates like this. They're up there on one of these beams. Angle irons. I've probably drilled. You know, making up all this steelwork for the roof. Hundreds and hundreds of holes. And I only bought, I think in a pack, I think you get five. Yes, that's a 12mm pack. There, look, you see, you get five in the pack. And I'm, I still haven't sharpened any. I'm on, I think I'm on my last one of those 12mm drill bits. So, you know, they've done extremely well um, to maintain their sharpness. In fact, hang on a second. I'm back. What I have been using in conjunction with the drill bits when drilling the hole is uh, a cutting fluid, a cutting oil, I suppose you'd call it. Now, this they come in many different forms. I used to use WD-40 or, or CRC spray, and I, I did find it used to help an awful lot. But then a friend of mine, Jared, over at Forch in Auckland, gave me a can of this stuff. Now this is weird, honestly, it's really weird, but it does, yeah, I'll do a demonstration, it does stick to the drill bit, which is really cool. So the bunch of the drills spinning in the chuck, and as it's spinning round, you put this on. Now, because of gravity, you will see that it's now starting to migrate down the drill bit. And, and when the drill bit's warm, when you've done a couple of holes, it will migrate south much quicker. So by the time you've pulled the drill chuck down with the lever, that now is on the workpiece. But for the period of time, that it's on its way down, you can line the drill up with your centre punch mark or your pilot hole on the drill bit first before the foamy stuff blocks your view. Bloody good! I've found that by using this, and I, I wasn't really a fan of using cutting fluid to be honest, by using this, it greatly extended the cutting life of a drill bit before it needs to be resharpened. So, thank you very much, Jared. I do really appreciate that. And there's still loads in the can. And I've cut hundreds and hundreds of holes with this. So in one can will last you a long, long time. Very impressed. And because it's quite sticky, the foam, when you're drilling a hole, for example, in the horizontal with your, with your hand 
drill, you know, your, your electric drill, um, handheld drill, I should say, it still sticks to the workpiece or to your drill bit. It doesn't just dribble onto the floor and you lose most of it. So again, really good product, very happy with that. And when that's run out, I will definitely get some more. Okay. Where are we at? Yes, I did struggle very much to, to, to teach students how to sharpen drill bits properly. They did struggle an awful lot. So I can see why a product like this is on the market. And there's lots of different brands out there. Again, like I say, uh, Project Farm, really good YouTube channel if you've not been there before. Uh, did some tests on different drill sharpening tools. And um, yeah, I think this one rated pretty high. So without further ado, let's take a quick look at the box and see what the manufacturer claims before we open it up and try and get it set up because I, I really don't know too much about this. Uh, I haven't d used one of these before. So you're going to see firsthand how we get on with it and how easy it is to use. Here we go. Drill Doctor 750X, the number one drill sharpener trusted by professionals. Cool. Oh, and we get a free knife sharpener as well. Excellent. So it's here, save time, save money and get back to work. These things are not cheap, so I suppose you've got to use it quite often and have a good use for it to justify having it. So what does it say on the box? Uh, painting technology. Drill Doctor's dual cam system ensures your bits are sharpened using the same geometry as drill manufacturers, making your bits cut like new every time. Drill bits can be sharpened hundreds of times, saving you the time and cost of replacing them. Yeah, I mean, to throw a drill bit out once it's got blunt is just ridiculous, isn't it? Well, that's the internals. Okay, let's see on the back. Mm, 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 mm. Three easy steps. Fast setup. The easy align port ensures your bits are aligned properly and for sharpening, allowing for adjustments to chisel and relief angles. Professional results. Painted dual cam sharpening system creates constantly sharp point angles from 115 to 140 degrees. Create split points. Excellent. The split point, uh, split port, creates self-centering split points on your bits, creating cleaner, oh, get off, fly, cleaner starts and less wandering when drilling into harder materials. Super, three-year warranty as well. Oh, there we go. Look, this is the interesting stuff. Drill doctor sharpens dull bits to factory sharp performance in less than a minute. Sharp bits cut cleaner, cooler, and perform more efficiently. They do. So this one will do from 3 millimeters to 19 millimeters drill sizes. So that's pretty cool, and it'll do all those types of drills. So high-speed steel, tin-coated, cobalt, black oxide, carbide, and, uh, and masonry. Fantastic, because I've got some blunt masonry drill bits I need to sharpen. That is awesome. Right, let's get it put together. Now, I didn't just want to uh, cover in this video using this tool. I want to ask you to try and work out how easy it is to set up and get ready for use. Oh, we get a bag. Excellent. And some destructions. User guide. I'm going to need that. And we've got some bits. So, ah, that must be our free knife sharpener. So we'll leave that packed up for now. What else have we got? Well, we'll take the main tool out first. Cool. Plugs into the mains. I like that. So nothing else required to make it work. I was a bit concerned that you might have to put your, your electric drill on the tool to power the tool, but obviously not. It's got its own internal motors. That's great news. You get a spanner and the chuck. Now that's a really critical part of the tool and quite adjustable for different, uh, well, different cuts, I suppose. Right. Let's get rid of the box. And I think what we should do next is read the instructions. Right, I've had a quick read through. And interesting bits. So choose your drill bit angle. Most bits are 118 degrees or 135 degrees, as per the diagrams on the left. Hold your bit point up to the key. Yep, so you got to check which one you, you want. If you can't tell, you base. Most wood and soft metal applications require 118 degrees. That's that one. Hard, the harder the materials such as stainless steel and tool steel require 135. If you're drilling contour materials such as car fender, plan on splitting the point. So there's a split point facility on this tool as well. Now, choose the angle. Well, we're going to be cutting mild steel, so I'm going to go for 118 
degrees. It says here, loosen the point angle adjustment knob on the right side of the sharpening port and slide the metal point angle adjuster adjustment plate to either the standard 118 or the flat 135. On the model 750X, it has additional features to enable you to fine-tune the bit geometry. That's pretty cool. Loosen the point angle adjustment knob, uh, slide the number to 118 to 135, or the custom angle of your choice. Right, let's do that, and let's set it to 118 degrees. Okay, so this is the, what do they call it, the point angle adjustment knob here on the side. So we're going to loosen that off. And that should allow us now to move this around. So on the 750, we can choose. So you can make this out on the screen or not. But this is 118 degrees. And if I'll just, there you are, look, 118. And it's also got the 135 position there, look. And of course, on this one, we can go anywhere between those two. In actual fact, we can go beyond it as well. But I'm going to set it to 118 degrees because I'm cutting mild steel. That'll do for now, won't it? You can see the sparkly wheel in there, little, little diamond wheel. Fantastic. Okay, what's next? Right, step one. Insert the bit into the chuck and tighten. Insert the bit into the chuck jaws and close the jaws just to the point where the bit slides in and out. Do not over tighten the chuck. The bit needs to be able to move in and out until step four. Model 750X users refer to the using the variable material takeoff. MTO, page 27. Hmm, I'll cover that. Uh, page 27, right, okay, do as we're told. Hate instructions, right. Uh, insert the bit as usual. Insert check in some import. Yeah, you can read that if you want. Okay, going back. Okay, so, chuck. Just loosen that off. That enough. Now I've chosen a 10 millimeter drill bit. There we are, look, it says to tighten it just enough so it's sort of got a little bit of grip on it. Yeah, and that can move freely. Oh, too freely. Right, hang on then. Let's just give it a bit more of a tweak. There we go. Right. Perfect. Okay, what's next? It says, insert the chuck into the al alignment port. Press the alignment port button down to and hold it. Match either of the alignment guides on the chuck with the 180 degree notch on the alignment port. Insert the chuck. While holding the button down, slide the drill bit forward until it touches the drill stop and the chuck is pushed all the way into the aluminium, uh, alignment port. Release the alignment button. Note, a good test to see if the chuck is tightened um, the correct amount is to make sure it moves when you pull it with your fingers but will not fall out when you turn the chuck upside down. Okay, well, doesn't, does. Okay, cool. Right, we're about right in tightness. Let's get it put in the machine. Right. This is the alignment port part of the tool, and this is the button that you've got to press down whilst inserting the drill bit. Okay, now on the chuck, we've got these two white marks. They need to be in the horizontal, and then this here, this little notch, and there's two, one either side, they need to line up. I thought I'd better explain this, it's not that clear on the instructions, into one of these notches here. On the actual, um, you know, orifice, I suppose you'd call it. Now we've gone for the 118 degrees um, bit angle, whereas if you've gone for higher, then you'd move it round to a, a notch further round, and if you've gone for less, then you move it this way. So we have to press the button down, we'll do that, and then I have to insert, it says, the drill bit. So, it touches that metal plate at the end, there's like a, a bolt just in there, and then you just keep pushing it in. Now make sure that you align that into the 18, 118 there, which is almost done. <laughs> there we go. Right. Now, 
we can let go of the, uh, the little button now. Remember, this is my first time, so it doesn't flow too well. Okay, now you can see on here that these two little fingers here, these little spring-loaded arms, they need to be at the narrowest point of the drill bit. So you need to turn the drill bit round, rotate the drill bit until they drop into the flute. There we go, look, that's about where it needs to be. Cool, so we've done that. What does Mr. Instructions say next? So we've done point two, three. Yes, we've just finished that now. Now it's just tighten the chuck. Okay, so we can tighten the chuck up. That's gonna hold the drill bit in that position. Great, so we'll press the button and take out our drill bit. So that's now set in the correct position and at the correct depth in the chuck. Perfect. What's next? Okay, so remove and retighten. So we've done that. We've retightened the chuck holding the drill bit. That's all good to go now. Sharpening the bit. Before sharpening, you should know, keep the cam in contact with the cam guide as you sharpen. Push the chuck straight into the port. Only light pressure is required. You'll hear a, hear a grinding noise zzz, <laughs> as you complete each half turn and each side of the bit face is ground. Okay, The chuck will rock as you turn it and the cam rides on the guide. It will be easier it will be easier to sharpen bits standing up. Okay, I'll stand up. One, align the guides. Turn the drill doctor on. Align either of the sharpening guides with the cam guide on the machine. Insert chuck in alignment port. Okay. Right, let's do that. Okay, so we're all powered up. All we need to do now is turn on the on button at the back. Cool. Look at that. Spins the uh, the little wheel. Right. Let's go turn it off again for a second, just so I can show you this bit. And you can hear me okay. We've got some little alignment marks here, the two white marks. And when you're putting this, the chuck into here, line up one of the white marks with this lug here. They call that, that's called a cam guide. And around the chuck, let's move that back a little bit. Around the chuck, you'll see we've got this cam, this, this sort of uh, plastic cam. It's further away from the center of the drill here. And here, you can see it's just, it's got these lobes. One here, like a bit like a camshaft, really. One here and one here. And then it gets really narrow where these white marks are. And that makes it easiest to insert into the tool. So... Here we go. Let's get it turned on. Now I need to stand up for this. <laughs> That's what it says in the manual. Okay. Right, so we're going to align the white mark in there. We're going to pop that into there. Oh my word. And I'm just rotating the drill bit now. You can see as it goes up on the lobe on the cam, it's changing the angle of the drill bit. And I'm pushing down slightly on the drill. Oops. We came off the cam there. So I'm pushing down and a slight force. <laughs> I'm pushing down on the chuck and with a slight force in that direction to keep the, uh, the lug. In fact, I'll move back a little bit. There we go. That'd be good, I want it to keep this cam guide in contact with the cam. That's critical. There's nowhere near as much material being ground off now. Yeah. 
We'll do another turn and see what it looks like. We'll go one more, one more lap. Nope, one more. <laughs> it seems quite unevenly sharpened this little bit. One side, it's not really doing much cutting at all, much sharpening, and the other side, the other face, it is. So I've obviously sharpened this drill bit in the past and done it quite unevenly. I think we're probably about there. We'll just do the other lobe as well to be sure. Yes, that's it. Right. Power down. Let's take a look. Okay. Whoa, look at that. It's shiny. Try and get it to focus for you. So as I understand it, what I was taught is obviously you've got your cutting face here. Oh, hang on. Where's a pointy stick? I will use a scriber. How's that? Okay, so obviously you've got your cutting face. Well, I say obviously, not everybody realises. You've got your cutting face on the drill bit that runs down here. And looking at that, that looks pretty, that's pretty sharp. And then, when you're manually cut, uh, sharpening these drill bits on the grinder, you do need to have, well, basically the back of here needs to be lower than this point here. Otherwise, the cutting edge isn't going to be in contact with your workpiece. If this was higher, then of course that's never going to make contact with the workpiece. Wow. Well, I suppose there's only one way to prove if this is nice and sharp. That means we need to cut some steel, don't we? Brilliant. Right, I'll get set up and we'll go and test the drill bit. One last thing. We've got to take it out of the, uh, the chuck. So just to do that anti-clockwise on there. Push it through. Remember, this end's still quite hot. And there we go. Looks bloody good, actually. Very impressed by that. I wonder what the wheel's like. Well, looking in there, the wheel looks completely unaffected. And of course, you can buy these wheels separately. You know, you can buy a new one for it. Easy. Right. To the uh, to the drill press. Right. I've got a piece of 12 millimeter thick plate steel, mild steel, and we're just going to run a pilot drill of, of uh, six millimeters through that, which is what I would normally do when I'm first starting to drill holes. And uh, we'll see how well, this drill bit I think is quite blunt, it hasn't been sharpened yet. good actually. Now if you get any kind of squeaking noise when, you, when you're drilling a hole, that tells you that your drill bit is blunt and you have to stop. <sighs> right, let's stick in our 10 millimeter newly sharpened by the drill doctor. Not a sponsor by the way. Stick that in there. I need a new chuck for this pillar drill. It's not the best. Right. Okay. Here we go. I'm 
pressing very hard on the lever at all. Excellent. Right, back to the bench. Oh, put that back a little bit, so there we go. Can I sit down now, instructions? Oh yes, I can. Fantastic. Okay, so there is just another look at the drill bit. Focus, damn you. <laughs> Hang on a second. There we go. So I'll keep it the same distance now. So there you go, it's, it's done a single cut and it hasn't really affected it at all. These are really good quality drill bits. This is another one of those um, same brand as what I showed you previously. So very, very happy with that. And that's the 118 degrees and that's the, de the, the degrees from, geez, how can I do this? Basically, that's the degrees there, look that face to this face and that's ideal for for doing mild steel and stuff now this is the actual uh, hole that we drilled and this is the top side this has got the paint on it and you can see that there's very well in fact there's no burring whatsoever or marginal burring because the blunter your drill bit the more of a burr you seem to get on the top side if we turn it upside down, this again I haven't dressed this as exactly as it came off the uh, off the pillar drill or drill press, depending where you live. And again, absolute marginal burring on this side as well, which indicates a nice sharp drill bit. It's not having to force itself through; it's uh, it's cutting all the way. Get a bit of swarf off. Damn you! <laughs> right, I reckon that's pretty conclusive. Well, that was fun actually. I really enjoyed getting that set up and you know, I did go through it step by step and it may not have seemed that easy, but in actual fact, if I was to sharpen a second drill bit now, I could have the whole thing done in probably about a minute, maybe a minute and a half. But do read the instructions. In this particular video, I've only covered the absolute basics of operation of this uh, was it 750X model of the Drill Doctor? You need to familiarise yourself with all the options. There's a lot more stuff that this can do, a lot more adjustments that you can make. Uh, you can do step drills and that kind of stuff as well. So do check it out. Um, I think this is really good. I mean, oh look, Swarf. Cool. I think it did exactly what it said on the box. Very, very happy. Now, um, what else did I say? Yes, this. This stuff is great. Now, I'm sure there's lots of different types of, you know, of, of brands out there, but this one is the one that I really like. And it's, I mean, I've been, I must have drilled a couple of hundred holes now, well, probably more than that, actually, using this, this spray. And you saw how I used it on the pillar drill. Really, really good. Very happy with that. <sighs> so, there you go. The Drill Doctor 750X, is it easy to use? Well, if I can use it, it really is easy to use. Um, did it do its job? Did it do what it said on the box? It did. It did an absolutely fantastic job of cutting that drill bit. Looks just fantastic. You've seen that close up anyway, but there you go. Okay, well, that's it. I want to keep this video as short as possible. If you enjoyed it, why not click on the subscribe button? You'll see a little gear icon turn up. Click on the gear icon and then tick the box and our friends at YouTube will send you an email or a notification as and when I upload any new videos. Uh, normally, most of my videos are automotive, motorcycle, car, kind of diagnostic repair, uh, what failed kind of videos. Um, some are fabrication, but I don't do too many of those to camera. It's actually quite difficult, to be honest. And um, every now and again, I get a tool and I think, hey, this kind of video, the information around this tool might be helpful to the viewers. So, you know, if you've got one of these or you've used a similar tool, Tell us about it. Put it in the comments. Let me know your experience. Did you find that the, the, the wheel wears out really quick? Is it really expensive to buy replacement uh, grinding wheels for them? Um, is the life expectancy good? What other brands have you used? What problems have you experienced? It'd be great to have some feedback because to this point, I have never used a tool like this in my life. 
I've always just gone for a, a bench grinder and done it manually on the bench grinder. And you could tell when I sharpened this drill bit using the Drill Doctor, not a sponsor, um, one side of the drill was required a lot more grinding than the other uh, cutting side, which meant that the, the, the sharpening that I'd done was uneven and it cut a lot better. So I think from now on, and my eyesight's getting pretty shit, so I can't see what I'm doing, to be honest. I think from now on, I'll be using this drill doctor. And who knows, I could even teach Mrs. Mechanic on how to sharpen drill bits, because it's that easy. And she could work her way through this entire drawer. Well, maybe apart from that one. That's not 19 mil, is it? That's what size is that? That's huge. That's 27 millimeters. Yes, that's not going to fit the drill doctor. So I'll have to sharpen that one manually, won't I? Okay, uh, what else? You'll find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, you can communicate through any of those portals. My email address is also down the bottom in the description. Uh, don't forget, you can get your Andy Mechanic swag now. There's a link. I'll put it there for you right now. You can click on that. It could be this side. No, which side is it going to be? That side. Yes, on that side, I think it is. Or this side. Who knows? It's on the screen. Click on that. You can get yourself an Andy Mechanic mug, key rings, um, some tall girl leggings for your wife partner, girlfriend, somebody else's girlfriend, whatever you want to do, uh, I'm not going to judge. Um, that's about it really, if you want to support the channel you can, like I said, buy some swag or you can go onto the Patreon page, become a patron to the channel or you could even just send some hard cash straight through by PayPal, there's an icon on the home page. Okay crew, well it's time for a bacon butty, I'll catch you later, over and out. Get the oh. <laughs> <laughs>